Welcome back to another Tutorial Tuesday. Today we're heading for France to take a look at Paul Ricard in F122. First we'll explain how you should drive the circuit in our track guide and then we're diving somewhat deeper and give you some in-depth tips on how to master this track completely using the Track Titan analysis. Starting the lap we bring the car over to the right hand side and brush the outside curbs. For turn 1 we brake shortly just before the second striped curb begins and then we turn in. We shift down to 5th gear, hit the apex and aim to clip the edge of the sausage curbs as these don't unsettle the car too much. For the second corner we stay in 5th gear and take a late apex using the full curb for the shortest route as it is very flat. We hit the brakes around a 50 meter board from high speed and flick the car into the corner, shifting down to 5th gear for the apex. We take all of the flat inside curbing keeping within track limits. We're immediately into turn 4, which we take in 3rd gear to help rotate the car. Try to use all of the inside curb and keep to the left side of the track on exit for a wider entry into turn 5. Turn 5 is one of the slowest taken in 3rd gear to avoid any wheel spin. You want to turn your car in, clip the apex and use as much track space as possible on exit. You want to avoid the little sausage curbs here as they will unsettle your car. We're progressive on the throttle so we can get the power down while avoiding losing the rear. We aim for a later apex to maximize the speed through turn 7. This corner is easily taken flat out and it's all about following the smoothest possible route onto the Mistral straight. We move all the way over to the right side of the straight and brush past the curbs. Hit the brakes just after the 100 meter mark. We downshift the third gear for the apex of turn 8, short shifting back up the fourth for better grip. We swing the car around the ninth corner where we use the curb to rotate the car. Running out of the chicane we want to be careful with the exit curb as well, as it can also mess up your traction. We move over to the left side for the tenth corner and we turn in around the 50 meter mark. We take it flat out in 8th gear with ease. Coming out of turn 10 we move to the left curb before turning in just after the 50 meter board. But don't break yet. We stay on the throttle until we have reached the start of the first apex. No need to brake too heavily here. Using 5th gear for this one and we let the car run out wide for the best exit. Turn 12 requires us to get all the way back over to the right side for a wide entry. Gradually reducing the brake pressure as you get towards the apex in 4th gear. We aim for a late apex, avoiding the raised part of the curb here as this one is not as kind as the others. And it will reduce our grip and downforce. We keep the car to the right all the way through turn 13. Coming to turn 14 we want to take a wide entry and a late apex to set up the final corner. We turn in right between the 150 meter board. Downshifting the 3rd gear and we try to hug the inside to set us up with the widest line into T15. The final corner is the tightest and slowest on the circuit and the main focus here is getting a good exit down the straight. We use third gear to give us enough grip to drive over the apex curb safely. We use as much track space as possible to accelerate to the finish line. And when you're on a qualifying lap stay to the left as it's a shorter distance to the line which makes your lap just that little bit faster. Now let's dive a little deeper and check out some corners which require some special attention. One of the struggles at Paul Ricard is your traction. The surprisingly rough exit curbs and long sweeping corners really test your traction management skills. The final corner is a really tricky one as it is slow and tight. The apex curb can genuinely upset your car and send you spinning. The exit curb here, as many curbs on Paul Ricard, are raised just a tiny bit but it can still mess up your traction pretty bad if you're not careful. To be sure of the fastest acceleration down the finish straight, use this curb with caution. Turn 5's exit curb can cause some problems too. As you're coming out of this slow and tight corner, you want to accelerate as hard as you can while also rotating your car into turn 6. Again, this exit curb is just raised a tad, which can unsettle your car if you're too aggressive on it. In the Track Titan analysis, we can see that we can't get on the throttle as early because we're still scrambling for traction, losing us a lot of time if we use this exit curb. When we look at the chicane, the kink after the apex can mess with your traction and can unexpectedly unsettle your car. As you're accelerating up to blistering speeds down the straight, 
this little curb will gladly eat away at your available traction. And as you can see, we have to get off the throttle and stabilize the car, slowing us down on the straight and leaving us vulnerable for overtaking. Turn 11 is this long sweeping right-hander where you've got to manage your speed and traction both very well. From the track tighten analysis, we can see what happens when you're slowing down somewhat too early here, but not enough. You can't get on the power as early and you'll lose time because you're struggling for traction as you're trying to accelerate whilst also turning the car through the corner. The apex curb in turn 12 is rough. It doesn't look too bad. But it's bigger than you might think. And that's the dangerous part about it. You don't think much of it until you're in the air rethinking all your life choices. This goes for a lot of apex curbs all around the circuit. They're steeper than they look, which is probably caused because of the track's paint job. So watch out for turn 12's apex curb because it will unsettle your car and it can result in a spin or even worse. Paul Ricard is all about knowing which curbs to use, which to avoid and maintaining high minimum speeds through the long sweeping corners. It's an often disliked track, but it's such a fantastic drive once you get a better feel for how this circuit flows. Let us know in the comments down below if this track guide was helpful. Check out the Track Titan platform in the description below. And as always, we hope to see you in the next one.